and they don't have any capacity to maintain relationship on equal basis on a fair principles of justice and you know democratic way of associating oneself whereas they make relationships easily and then violate the others rights or take advantage of them unduly and then abruptly escape as if a pickpocketer who talks nicely to you just only to knock down your purse that kind of manner that kind of a kind of ill will a kind of criminal intent they have while they establish a relationship with the others and we see people are not so tolerant when it comes to the view of others the being of others the manner of others uh, you know way of eating or uh, choice of food things like that this very low intolerance intolerance level and their low threshold level to resist aggression and their ready made indulgence into violence and vandalism against the others is another very very important syndrome of this antisocial personality disorder and another thing we know they don't have any capacity to feel guilt my dear sisters and brothers if you notice the guys who suffer from the notion that they are belonging to a particular privileged caste big caste so called upper caste they are suffering from this anti social personality disorder they have the mentality to readily blame others even without any reason so now these six characteristics how they are applicable to the so called guys who are suffering from a superiority complex or a kind of general category or back backward class or whoever is claiming to be himself greater uh, in in terms of caste status and rank these are we other groups they have this careless concern for the others they are very very irresponsible in their behavior they violate the rights of the others they do indulge in violence and they have no sense of guilt neither they learn from the experience and they don't open themselves to reason and logic and they have a kind of ready made excuses for everything and thereby they rationalize their own privileged position this misappropriated position in society this exploitative status that they enjoy in this society so those who claim to be belonging to the upper caste or dominant caste are really suffering from the anti social spirit which dr ambedkar has rightly drawn attention to in his speech on annihilation of caste and that analysis that perceptive of dr ambedkar is fully amplified and scientifically brought out by the world health organization in its concept of the anti social personality disorder which we have so far in detail seen if 15 to 20% of the population of this country which is more or less educated and occupying the important departments of power and industries and the public domain and media and things like that are from the childhood made to suffer this anti social spirit brought up in this anti social spirit and their personality is cultivated brought up to be an anti social personality disorder then this country is into a, a big mental uh, you know problem in this country is going to face a great crisis because 15 to uh, 10 to 15% of the uh, caste 
beneficiaries are systematically indulging in themselves to become patients to become disordered personalities to become anti social personality disordered people they have a dissocial personality or a disorder or they they have a dissocial personality or they suffer from this anti social personality disorder and you see if a person is having this anti social personality disorder then he is incapable of correcting himself incapable of attaining a balance in his mind and incapable of uh, feeling guilt or getting rid of his irresponsibility and uh, refraining from violence if that is the case such a large population of people who have become patients suffering from this anti social personality disorder then one can understand the really anti national anti economic uh, prosperity and anti uh, you know uh, welfare and happiness uh, effects of this anti social personality disorder that it can cause to all that relevant parameters that i have now referred to therefore it becomes a mandate it becomes a bounden duty of the people who are not inflicted who are free from this anti social personality disorder to take upon themselves the role of the teacher the role of a buddha the role of a great healer of the minds because most of these who suffer from this caste 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 related superiority complex they are actually suffering from this anti social personality disorder therefore the antidote to their anti social personality disorder is buddhism lord buddha is the philosopher you take him as a philosopher he is the greatest philosopher who has paid the detailed attention as to the functioning and uh, and you know nature of the mind of men are sentient beings lord buddha focused on the mentality and the mental phenomenon and the arising and passing away of the mental states of mind and he focused how to cultivate the mind he is the first and foremost philosopher in this world who has eliminated us as to the importance of the the value of examining our own mind and liberating our mind from a number of innumerable falsehoods and prejudices therefore as a god also he is the one who who has focused us on our mind so that our mind can become liberated so either you take him as a man as a philosopher or you take him as a god in both ways lord buddha has focused on the problem of the mind and he wanted us to get liberated from the mental defilements and that process is called enlightenment and if buddhi lord buddha and buddhism has paid so much attention to the psychological aspects of the human behavior to the mental composition of the psychosomatic somatic structure called human beings then what are the contributions of buddhism towards towards ameliorating towards cultivating towards bringing up the mental state to a higher state of uh, nobility and there alone buddhism by its inherently so being a socially spirited philosophy it recommends it gives a medicine to this anti social personality disorder therefore my dear brothers and sisters rather we should say sisters first and then brothers next to 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 set aside the mental block of giving priority to the males in the first place and then next to the female rather we should say my dear androgynous friends and then i should start dear sisters and brothers like that anyway the point is that having focused on the psychological damages and the psychological disorders that can be caused by the caste as a anti social spirit dr ambedkar has rightly diagnosed that most of the people in this country are suffering from this 
antisocial personality disorder and it is a great danger and it will lead to a breakdown of the health of this country. Hence, he wanted the sane and enlightened people who belong to his clan, that is, the, the so-called people who have been uh, outcast by the system, rather those rebels against this, uh, this stupefying, this foolish system, they are the enlightened lot, the Buddhist. Their duty is now to teach these people, to attend to these people, to cure these people of this antisocial personality disorder and bring them to be meeting themselves with themselves and make them to come to terms to themselves so that they can become an authentic personality, they can become actually what they are. So far they have been escaping uh, to face themselves by virtue of this false selfhood that has been given to them. And once they encountered the Buddhist uh, socialist spirit, social spirit, the Buddhist psychological tools and the meditative techniques and the liberating effect of the Buddhist intellect, then they will be getting rid of their prejudices, their ignorance, their mental defilements, their physical and behavioral defilements and they will for the first time become human beings unto themselves. They will realize what actually is the true selfhood. And such is the effect of uh, the teachings of Buddhism going to be. That is why Dr. Ambedkar, to destroy the antisocial spirit called caste, yes, the state of mind, this personality disorder, he has suggested that we should take up Buddhism. If we know the importance of the psychological benefits that are going to accrue to us by even thinking of Lord Buddha and even by uttering the words enlightenment, happiness, awareness, awakening and being vigilant and freedom from the bondages, freedom from cravings, freedom from defilements, these vocabularies are called the hedonistic vocabularies, the liberative vocabularies. These words, these words are going to create a positive environment in the mind. The mind sees what the eye, the eye sees what the mind knows. So if we have the positive words in our dictionary, then our articulation, our ways of combining the, combining the words and creating sentences out of that will be also positive. I want to give love to you. If these words alone are available to us to express, then definitely we will combine that, combine that words, these words to produce a positive effect only. Within the 24 letters, we are creating the so many words in, in English language. Similarly, with the limited vocabulary that which is relating to positive, good and enlightening words, then naturally our sentences, our poetic articulations, our parley, our langua, all will be positive and happy words, wordings only. This very psychological uh, importance of Buddhism as an answer, as an antidote to the antisocial personality disorder called caste system is very, very important thing to be taken note of by all our androgynous brother, androgynous friends, sisters and brothers. We have to carry forward this message to all and everyone that Dr. Ambedkar is not merely, you know, asking us to take the path of enlightenment for the sake of getting rid of the social disabilities that are inflicted on us unreasonably, but also with a greater noble burden of making even this antisocial personality disorder in afflicted uh, people also to be liberated by us. So we have a two-fold task before us. One is to further our process of and progress of enlightenment, at the same time, we have the compassionate duty to cure these people who suffer from antisocial personality disorder. Further, my dear brothers, 
Apart from these psychic uh, details that I have talked to you, we may also have to go a little bit more into how best we have to adopt the Buddhist ethics, Buddhist philosophical outlooks and also make it to reach to our people. In that regard, we have to be focusing on the expedient means. Upaya Kausalya is the word, are the words used by Lord, um, Lord Buddha. We have to use innumerous Upaya Kausalyas, expedient means to take the Dhamma to the nook and corner of this country or why not even to the world because the world outside this country also is being inflicted, being inflicted by sufferings of various colors, hues and things like that. I would like to say one story here. The great compassionate Avalokiteshvara. Avalokiteshvara means one who is paying regard to the cries of the world. The regarder of the cries of the world is called Avalohideswara. This noble Bodhisattva has seen the sufferings of the people and then he goes to Lord Buddha and says, Lord, I could not tolerate the sufferings of the people in, this, in these worlds. So I would like to serve them and rescue them from their sufferings for that I intend to take a vow until I liberate each and every or the last person, each and every person or the last person or being from suffering, I won't stop my this work. And if I stop my work, my head will split into 100 pieces. And he says, please give me blessings so that I can go and you know, attend to the suffering sentient beings and so that they can be liberated from the suffering. Lord Buddha says, okay, go ahead, Avalokiteshvara. Then Lord Avalokiteshvara produces so many bodhisattvas, buddhas, uh, from his, uh, each pore of his hair, from his body, and millions and millions of Buddhas are coming out and they are going and attending to various realms and innumerable beings and solving their problems and bringing them up. After some time, Avalokiteshvara takes a, a stock of the uh, suffering levels of the people. He takes a review meeting and finds that still the sufferings of the world have increased and not decreased. Then he thinks, Are, this is too difficult to enlighten, to end the sufferings of all the peoples. At least let me concentrate on myself being liberated from the sufferings. At that moment, since he has broken the woe, his head splits into 100 pieces. Despite his head being split into 100 pieces, he still holds to his head and uh, requests Lord Buddha, makes a prayer to the world honored one and asks for a way out. Then Lord Buddha says, No, the, the, the endless sufferings of the world sentient beings are there because the sentient beings are endless. Therefore, to say that, I have completed, completely eradicated the sufferings of one group of people doesn't mean that there are other groups of people who are not suffering or not existing. Indeed, in this world, endless forms of violence, endless forms of injustice, endless forms of terrorism, endless forms of um, atrocities, uh, inflicting disabilities are taking place day in and day out. Only thing? We are not aware of them. They are not reportable. They are not reachable. They are not visible. They are not uh, to be heard. They are not uh, within our means and access to know how and what kind of sufferings uh, beings are undergoing. Therefore, Lord Buddha says to Avalokiteshvara, don't worry that you can't you know, end the sufferings of the people, but continue your woe to... Eliminate the sufferings of the people as much as, as far as, as many as possible, so that they can be liberated from sufferings. And such is the attitude that we should also take, dear, uh, dear, my dear friend.
friends because we cannot say that we can end the sufferings of our own people we cannot say that we can it is sufficient to end the sufferings of our own people it is not even sufficient to end the sufferings of our people but as as bodhisattva beings as beings as intelligent ordinary prudently prudent beings it is in our interest that we should also engage our intellect so that and our own efforts and relentless efforts so that the sufferings of the others also can be as far as possible handled that tackled by us here it is very relevant to quote martin luther king he says that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere the injustice that is taking place in the nook and corner of the world may not be known to us but may not be visible to us but may not be reported to us but it is our duty as and when such injustice is reported has become visible has attained our conscience has reached to our uh, senses then it is our duty to protest against it to organize ourselves and in whatever means and ways possible we should in a in a positive way address the issue and alleviate that suffering because if we leave it as unreported or as a minor ordinary incident of innocuous of of minor significance then it will spill into and snowball into a larger difficulty where the justice everywhere would be destroyed then it is our duty to be conscious and report such kind of uh, injustice that take takes place in the invisible dark corners of anywhere or any part of the country or the world such should be the avalokiteshwara kind of vow that we should take and in that regard we have to not limit our spread of buddhist this great teaching of liberation this great teaching of ending sufferings to our own levels we have to take it to the various uh, borders various people of our own people in the first place and then take it to the various other suffering people groups in this world there are 72000 people groups in this world so our task is far more gigantic and in that direction today we should all resolve and take a, a take an avalokiteshwara kind of vow and take dr ambedkar's the 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 entire life a con- the contribution of this entire life take a lesson from him that we have to fulfill the dream that dr ambedkar was having that one day in this country our people will be a ruling class without having the ignominy of suffering our personality our self hood our respect our honor that is the another important uh, message that i was feeling like to feeling like to share with you because lord buddha is the moon that has been shown by uh, dr ambedkar through the index finger and we should not stop by seeing at the index finger instead of moving forward and reaching the lord buddha our goal is that we should use a various means and methods various forms of upaya kausalyas to reach the the medicine king bodhisattva the medicine of lord buddha's teachings the vaidyanada lord buddha is called vaidyanada the lord of medicine so that that medicine of lord buddha the teachings of lord buddha will be available to kill this a uh, disease called antisocial personality disorder whose name in indian context is caste sabba mangalam and i would like to recite a, a homage mantra to lord buddha and lord ambedkar om siddhartaya vidmahe sakya simhaya dimahi tanno buddha prachodayat om bhimarajaya vidmahe बोधिसत्वाय धीमहि तन्नो अंबेडकर प्रचोदयात सब मंगल साधु साधु साधु